This video will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to install a service or insulated door. Throughout this video, we will often refer to the installation instructions. It's important that you read the manual for a thorough, detailed explanation of the installation procedures. The manual also contains an important safety checklist to help ensure that your customer's door has been installed properly and in a safe manner. This video is only meant to help demonstrate the procedure described in the full installation and maintenance manual. It is not a substitute for it. We are not responsible for any charges incurred through missing parts, operation, or damage due to improperly installed door assemblies. Only trained door system technicians should install or perform maintenance on doors. In this video, we are filming an insulated door. However, the installation steps for a regular service door are the same. As with any installation, there are critical steps that must be taken before installation work can actually begin. First, upon delivery of the product, check the condition of the materials for any freight damage, visible or concealed, and to ensure that the complete order has arrived. Check to make sure that you have all the pieces, guides, bracket plates, sometimes called head plates, barrel, sometimes called shaft, hardware, curtain, motor, if required, and the hood. Open the hardware box to expose the hardware, drawings, and installation instructions. If there is any freight damage or the delivery is incomplete, please follow the procedure outlined in the installation and maintenance manual in order to correctly address any issues. This is very important because if installation is made with damaged product, Cornell is not responsible for any resulting replacement or labor costs. Tip. Before you start installation, it's useful to check that the bracket plate holes line up with the guide holes. While we make every effort to ensure these will, occasionally a misalignment may occur. Check the wall opening width measurement against the drawing. This can be done using a tape measure or a laser measure. Check the height of the door against the drawing. Check the wall for plumb as well as all clearances to be sure that there are no issues prior to starting the installation. Lastly, check that the floor is level. We recommend before starting any work, completely rope off your work area with danger tape for your safety and the safety of those around you. Once you've completed your pre-installation checks, it's time to begin installing the guides. You will note that the guide construction includes removable bell mouths. First, determine the distance between guides, referred to as the DBG. This can be greater than the actual opening width and can be measured differently. You should refer to the installation drawing to confirm the DBG length and where it is measured. On this door, the DBG is the same as the opening, 14 foot and the dimension is measured from the tip to tip of the innermost guide angle. Mark on the floor where the tip of the innermost guide angle should be. Do this for the other side. Note, if the DBG is greater than the opening, find the difference between the width of the opening and your DBG. In this example, the difference is one inch. So you will split that in half and add half an inch to the measurement on each side. Then make your mark on the floor. Once you have marked both sides, measure the distance between. This should equal your DBG. This is a critical step. If the guide opening is not correct, stop and repeat the previous steps. Next, stand one guide up against the wall and check if it is perfectly plumb. Mark the holes and drill them. Then fasten the top and bottom bolts until almost tight. Check for plumb again. If they are completely plumb, fasten all bolts and completely tighten them. Now the first guide is complete. Stand the other up with the innermost tip on the mark you made to ensure the DBG is correct at the bottom. Once this is correct, Check the DBG at the middle and top of the guides. 
Tip. To do this easier, ensure the DBG is correct at the bottom, and then measure the distance from the back of each guide at the bottom, middle, and top to check it's the same, using a tape measure or a laser. Once the DBG is accurate along the length of the guide, mark, drill, and tighten the holes exactly as the other side. Note, welding the guides is acceptable. Welds should be made at each wall fastener hole on the guides. Instructions specific to your door can be found on the guide drawing. For every door, a fillet weld will need to be made around the perimeter of the wall fastener hole. Some doors, such as wind-loaded or fire doors, will also require a weld at the heel and or toe of the guide. Heel and toe welds must be level with the wall fastener. This process may twist the guide slightly, so check the DBG frequently. Gather up bracket plates and all hardware necessary for installing the shaft. Raise the barrel assembly onto forklift and place standard vice grips at the end of each fork. As this door is 14 foot wide, rings are used to attach the curtain to the barrel. With larger width doors, the curtain will be attached directly to the barrel. Assemble the barrel ring so that the nub of the bottom of the ring is inserted into the pre-drilled hole. The operator side of the shaft has a key notch. Take the bracket plate and as a rule of thumb position it 3 inches from the start of the barrel. Move the ring into place and hand tighten the set screw to hold it. The other side is the adjuster side. Put on the bracket plate followed by the adjuster wheel. Secure to hold with the bolt. Lift the barrel assembly into position so that the brackets can be mounted to the guides. Bolt the brackets to the guide starting with the tension side. The bracket should be fastened to the inside of the guides. After the brackets are fastened, make sure that the shaft is centered between the brackets and lock down the set screws on the drive side bearing. Take the removable bell mouth sections of the guide off. Remove the operator from the box. Tip. Check that the gears are meshed together. Sometimes they can shake out during transit. Assemble the motor mounting bracket to the operator. Place in the additional screw. This is used to apply the proper tension on the chain at a later stage. Now the operator is set up and complete. It can be lifted up onto the side where it is to be mounted. Bolt the motor mounting bracket onto the bracket plate. Place the key in the key notch and then put the barrel sprocket on. Check that this is aligned to the operator sprocket. The drive chain will need to be sized to fit and then a chain breaker will be needed to break the chain at the appropriate length. the master link will hold the chain together. Once the chain is connected between the drive shaft and the operator, the operator will need to be adjusted back away from the shaft in order to properly tension the chain. After the chain is tight, you need to make sure the chain is straight between the drive sprocket and the driven sprocket before securing the set screws and tightening the mounting brackets fully. After everything is tight, use the supplied motor brace to lock the operator in place so that it cannot move when operated. If there is power to the door, meaning the operator is connected, or you can run power from the generator, you can test that everything is functioning properly. All electrical functions and testing are covered in a separate video. Before the curtain is installed, we recommend drilling the holes for the hood support bracket, since it is easier to get to the mounting point. First determine the line horizontally across the wall in line with the very top of the guides. Take your hood support and mark where it will be mounted on the wall by whatever means possible. 
sleeve or wedge masonry anchors for concrete, or bolts or welding for steel application. In this case, we made an additional bracket since the wall was not yet in place. Make sure the bracket will sit midway between the bracket plates and flush with the top. Drill the holes a little bit above your chalk line. This will make up for the weight sag from the support and the hood. It is now time to install the curtain. Raise it off the ground a few feet. Once the curtain is off the ground, cut the outer layer of cardboard off the curtain everywhere except where the forks are so that there is still a layer of protection between the curtain and the hoisting apparatus. Gather your slings and carabiners and inspect all material to make sure that there are no cuts or wear on your slings or carabiners. Orientate the curtain on the forklift so that the starter slats are on top. Secure the curtain to the lift before raising it into the air, directly under the barrel assembly. Once the curtain is under the barrel and centered, sling the curtain using your nylon straps and carabiners. Sling setups should never be spread out much more than 10 foot, so use as many setups as needed in order to properly sling the curtain. If there are too few, too much weight will be on the curtain and the slats will get dented and damaged. Lower the forks down so that all the weight of the curtain is suspended in the slings. Leave the fork six inches to one foot under the suspended curtain for safety, just in case the sling happens to break. You may want to wrap the carabiners in styrofoam so that they don't mar the curtain as they make contact with it. Check and make sure the curtain is still spaced evenly between the guides. If not, pick the curtain back up and adjust the slings as many times as necessary. Cut the bands holding the curtain together. Using the operator or hand chain, roll the shaft around so that the starter slats on the curtain are flat against the back side of the slings. Take a pair of standard vice grips and securely clamp each starter slat to the nylon sling such that the flat part of the vice grip is facing you. Once all the slings have a starter slat clamped to it, roll the barrel into the up position counterclockwise so that the curtain starts to wrap around the barrel. Stop rolling the barrel once the starter slats come all the way over the top and hang freely by a couple of inches from the front side. For large doors, you should raise the heavily protected forks of your lift enough so that the weight of the curtain is transferred back to the lift. Now, with the weight off the slings, roll the barrel around using preferably the hand chain in either direction until the attachment holes on the barrel rings line up with the starter slats. Make sure the curtain does not move during this step. Once the holes are very close to lining up, slowly drop the forks of the lift down so that the weight transfers back to the slings. Start from one side of the curtain, remove the vice grips, and using your mounting hardware, attach the starter slat directly to the barrel on larger doors and to the rings on smaller doors. Move across the length of the curtain, moving it up or down as needed to attach all of the starter slats to the barrel ring. Hand tight for now. Once all of the bolts are in, Measure between the inside of the head plate and the curtain to make sure that the curtain is centered between them. If the curtain is properly spaced between the brackets, tighten the bolts down completely across the curtain. After all bolts are tight, continue rolling the barrel around in the upward position until the curtain is completely wrapped around the barrel. Some things to watch for during this step are, while you are rolling the curtain, make sure that the curtain stays centered between the brackets. If at any time the curtain starts to shift from one side to the other, stop and realign. Make sure the tension wheel is freely spinning while you are rolling. If it stops or gets locked up, stop and make sure that it is not too tightly slamming against the outside of the head plate. Note, with larger doors, it will help if you apply tension to the door while you are raising it up to help the operator or person running the chain hoist. Keep an eye on the limits in the operator. If they roll too far, the limit nuts can run off the limit shaft. Every now and then you may need to adjust them while you are raising the door initially. Stop rolling the barrel when the bottom bar gets to be six inches to a foot from the wrap of the curtain. At this point, the curtain will no longer be touching the slings, but leave them on until the door is fully tensioned for safety. 
Now the curtain is installed. The removable bell mouth sections can be reattached along with the stopper bars. It is now time to tension the spring. Look at your shop sheet included with the drawings. This shows the amount of turns that must be applied. In this case, it is 1.91 turns. This information is also written on the barrel. Three important notes. One, every door is different and requires a unique number of turns which are calculated when the door is engineered in the factory. This is always indicated on the shop sheet. Two, never let the door down without tension and always apply a remove tension when the door is in the extreme open position. Three, much care must be taken during this procedure and only use proper winding bars to add tension to the door. After tension can be felt in the adjuster wheel, it is time to start counting your turns. Our shop sheet indicates this door requires 1.91 turns of the spring. Since we will make each turn one spoke at a time and there are six spokes on the wheel, we will multiply 1.91 turns by 6, giving us 11.46 turns. Since we can't make a partial turn on a spoke, we will round this up and insert and rotate our winding bars 12 times. Using two bars, apply tension in the counterclockwise position. Please note, applying tension in the wrong direction will cause catastrophic failure. Start counting your turns after the tension can be felt in the adjuster wheel. As calculated, we need to put 12 tension turns or two complete turns of the adjuster wheel. When you have completed the turns, insert the pin in the top part of the tension wheel. Now the slings may be removed and the forklift moved out from under the door. If you have power to the operator, you can set the limits of the door to control where the door stops. This is covered in a separate electrical installation video. Take the hood support and mount this onto the holes you drilled earlier. Next, starting with the tension side, take the hood and bolt to the bracket and then the hood support. You may need to pre-drill the hood support since it is much thicker than the hood rings on the brackets. Tip, if you are going to pre-drill your holes, lower the door to the down position so that the drill bit doesn't go through the support and damage the curtain. If the hood sags too much, you may need to raise the center hood support up slightly to help the aesthetics of the hood. This can be done by chaining it to a support on the wall. Take the hood panels, lay them on top of the hood, and screw them in. At this point, the mechanical installation is complete. The door pictured has been installed with a rolling door protector, or RDP, at the hood. All electrical and RDP installations are covered in separate videos. As a reminder, full installation instructions can be found on our Dealer Resource Center. If you have any questions on installation in the field, our support center can be reached at 1-800-233-8366.